Hi everyone, uh, thanks for having us. I think we're probably gonna talk about something a little bit different to what you've been hearing so far. So we're gonna be talking about real human beings in the real world making real journeys and how we've sort of started to stitch that together using digital data. So if you cast your mind back to 2012, uh, we had the London Olympics, TfL launched the Wi-Fi network. Fast forward four years to 2016 and Exterion as was now global had just won the London Underground advertising contract. And we approached TfL to say, look, you've got this, this Wi-Fi network. Is there anything that we can do to use it to help us understand how our audiences are flowing through the network? And so we launched a pilot project, 50 stations across London. Signage went up and it was informing the public that data was going to be collected. Importantly, privacy was always at the heart of this. A constant dialogue was held with the ICO with the Mayor of London, and importantly, with the public as well, so they could understand the benefit of why this data was being collected. And so, it was a great success, public section was positive, and we got out some really interesting insight. For example, did you realise that people travelling between London King's Cross and Waterloo, you'd think there'd be three route choices they'd make? They'd make 14 different route choices, some completely insane ones, travelling up and down lines, getting very, very lost. Anyway, so, what we then needed to do was scale it and understand how we can actually leverage all of this data. So just to explain how it works, you've got a mobile phone in your pocket, through your mobile network operator, you are pre-authenticated on the Wi-Fi network. That means we have a persisted unique ID, which is double hashed for privacy reasons, so we never ever see the individual device. Now what we then need to understand is how are people moving through those stations? So there are 8,000 access points across the London Underground Network, and then we need to understand how people are moving through and those devices are connecting to those individual access points in sequence, and then how they change, and then how they exit the network. Now, to give you an idea of the scale of this, we've had to 3D model 150 kilometres of platform, corridor, and ticket hall to get a real understanding of this. And then importantly, huge amounts of information so to give you an idea, we always like to do a little bit of number wang in this. We collect over the course of a month, one billion device connections every single month. We have to stitch together 60 million journeys across the London Underground network. So when you think about it, just because your device is connected to one access point doesn't necessarily think, mean it's connected to the next one. So we have to stitch them together. Just because you've been seen at a station doesn't necessarily mean you've been in that station. You've just been on the train passing through. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we're doing it to collect information, to help us understand consumers as they move through the network, to ensure our clients give their, give their consumers a better experience. So I'll give you some numbers, and this has been really important for us during the pandemic. So we can now understand the unique reach every single day or over a period of time across the network or for an individual campaign. So yesterday, for example, I looked in and had a look, there were 1.4 million individuals using the London Underground Network. Over a one-week period, that's 4.6 million. Over a, a two-week period, 7 million people. People are really out there. And what that enables us to do is stitch together those journeys and help clients understand how they can engage with consumers throughout the course of that entire journey. Now, I'll give you an example. This is really helpful when there are big events on. So I think the European Championships was referenced in the video at the beginning. We can understand where people came from, where they interchanged, and how they ended up at Wembley for that big match. So if you wanted to talk to consumers on that journey, Baker Street is your key point. That's where people begin their journey and everybody interchanges. What it also allows us to do is through that data, it means TfL can provide consumers with a better customer experience. That means they're more engaged, and that means our clients get a better outcome. And I'm gonna pass over to Mark, who's gonna talk a little bit more about how that data has been used from TfL's perspective. Great, thank you very much. Um, as Mick said, yeah, obviously this data is crucially important to enable uh, global to target audiences, but uh, this much more granular and lower latency um, information also enables us to do much more from a, from a customer perspective as well. Uh, that data enables us to do long-term transport planning, understand how people are moving through the city, how that's changing over time, and ensuring that we uh, prioritise our sort of capital investment in infrastructure that's going to have the biggest impact. 
Uh, that information also allows us to really have a, a pulse check on the network day to day, enabling us to make better and faster um, decisions within stations so that operational colleagues are able to, to make changes that provide a better customer experience. Uh, equally, it enables us to sort of see emerging trends and, and anticipate um, if there are problems that are likely to arise uh, in the future. It provides us with better information to provide customers with, with details before they start to, to travel, to plan their journeys. And really critically important, if something was to disrupt their journey, uh, the opportunity to replan as they go. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the opportunity to slowly start to influence travel behavior over time. Um, historically, perhaps our greatest challenge at TFL has been to try to uh, ensure that we had sufficient capacity in both the morning and the evening peak in order to transport people around the city. And obviously, whilst ridership numbers are lower now than, than what they, they were sort of prior to the pandemic, um, I'm sure that as you traveled on the network today, it's getting a lot busier um, it's only a matter of time before we we're back into a situation where it's sort of too busy at some of the pinch points on our network during those peak times. So if we're able to understand through this data um, how we can massage um, when people travel, the routes that they travel by, we'll be able to make much more effective use of that transport capacity in the future. Uh, it isn't just about the future though. Um, this isn't sort of hypothetical use cases. Um, we are making use of this information right now to, to better manage the transport network in London. And a very good example of that uh, comes from a couple of years ago now uh, during the first phases of the COVID lockdown. Um, you might recall, it's sort of like a, yeah, it seems like a lifetime ago now, but we're in a situation where only essential workers were able to travel about the network. And it was vitally important that we managed to maintain a safe network for them traveling around the system, but equally for our staff to, to, to sort of um, facilitate those journeys as well. And what we were starting to see were hotspots emerging in places on the network where we wouldn't traditionally have problems. Um, in the east of London, uh, at Stratford, West Ham, Canning Town, and equally at Vauxhall as well. And these hotspots were materialising in sort of specific places within stations, but, but also at times of day that we weren't familiar with. And, and to begin with, it was a little unclear of exactly what was causing that. So by taking the Wi-Fi data that, that Mix described, uh, marrying up uh, against that with our entry and exit data, the Oyster and contactless uh, sort of data that we have, and then sort of mapping construction sites within London. We started to see that it was actually sort of the travel associated with the construction industry that was having uh, a significant sort of contributory factor towards these hotspots. Um, not only did it allow us to diagnose the problem, by having that sort of detailed information, we were then able to have much richer discussions with the construction industry, being able to go to specific sites and talk to them about when the people who are working at their sites were traveling, where they were traveling from, um, enabling them to potentially tweak the start and end times of some of their shifts, and certainly enabling us to provide better information around uh, re-timing or rerouting journeys. Um, it had a real significant impact as well. Uh, we saw a 13% reduction in the number of people exiting at those peak times from, from sort of the hotspot stations. Um, really important to make sure that we kept the essential journeys happening in London when that was required. But, but also really important from TFL's uh, reputational perspective as well, because we knew that we needed to demonstrate the ability to manage uh, a safe and orderly network so that when the time came, we'd be able to welcome all of you back with confidence to the network as well. Increasingly as well, we're starting to power our real-time customer information with this sort of data and, and sort of real-time operational information as well. You have no interest in what should be happening on the network. You want to know what is actually happening on the network. As you pile out of here in a, in a couple of hours' time, you want to know what's happening at um, Charing Cross Station, Leicester Square Station, whatever it is. And we need to make better use of this data to inform your decision making. And again, after the pandemic, um, we know that people are far more interested in traveling at quieter times and through quieter routes on the network. Equally, we know that for a lot of people, you've got the flexibility for the first time to do that. You, know, you don't necessarily have to be at the desk at half past eight in the morning answering your emails. It's okay to come in at half past 10 for that meeting. It's all right to leave at four o'clock. So there's a, a much better opportunity for customers to make use of this information if we provide it in a form uh, that is, is user friendly. And that's why we've got the TFL Go app, and that's why we're redeveloping the TFL website as well. This information is also being really helpful in our conversations with different industry sectors. 
people are still a little bit nervous about getting back out onto the network. And whilst you know, generic modeling is, is useful to an extent, being able to talk to you know, retailers, um, the large employers about exactly what's happening uh, locally at the stations around their network so that they can provide advice to their customers and to their employees so that they can start traveling again with confidence. Really important for them and the vibrancy of, of, of central London, really important for TfL as well uh, as we try to recover ridership and start to get back towards financial self-sustainability as well. Uh, in the future, that data becomes really valuable as well as we start to sort of knit together the routes that people take around the network. Uh, that Wi-Fi data will enable us to say, actually, this is the real journey time it takes you to get from point A to point B, taking into account just how far it is to transit through an interchange station, taking into account whether or not there's sort of congestion at certain parts of the network, whether or not it's sort of busy at a platform at a particular point in time. So that in the future, when you start to plan a journey on, on sort of either TFL Go or on our website, it's not just the fastest journey that you can select or a step-free journey that you can select, but potentially the quietest journey that you want to select so that you're more likely to get a seat. Um, so it's so a much, much better information available in the future as well. Speaking of the future, Fingers crossed, uh, any, any day now we will announce uh, when the Elizabeth line will be opening after um, uh, significant delays, which I'm sure that you're all familiar with. Um, it will be an absolutely transformational addition to the transport network in London. Um, and we've done lots of modeling to try to understand what we think you guys are gonna do when you start to use it. But actually the Wi-Fi data will enable us to see how people actually do start to, to use the, the, the network. You know, potentially if people don't realize that, that the Elizabeth line is providing a faster connection, we'll be able to target our messaging in certain locations to say, did you know that you could get there faster going this way? Equally, um, it might sort of create some pinch points that we haven't anticipated in the modeling. And again, um, being able to see what's happening in real time on the network as passenger numbers grow will make us uh, able to make better decisions. Um, better decisions, better customer information drives customer satisfaction. That's what we're in the business of. That will drive greater revenues for us, greater ridership on the network. Equally, it's the business that, that Nick and Global are in as well. Um, it creates a more engaged customer who's more likely to uh, in, engage with the, with the advertising that's out on our estate. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention this morning. Thank you.